Breakfast with us link. Who can fix the shower? Service today. Who can fix the power? Service today. Yes, we can, is what we say. Service today. Every time you see our bright yellow trucks in your area, we're helping out your neighbours. We can help you too. So for the best plumbing, electrical, heating and cooling work, call Service Today 24-7. Can you fix the shower? Yes, we can. Can you fix the power? Yes, we can. Yes, we can, is what we say. Service today. Call 1300 Service. As you get older, often the best place to receive nursing care is your home. For nearly 130 years, RDNS Silverchain has cared for South Australians in the comfort of their own homes. If you have Commonwealth funding for aged care services, we can help monitor, treat and manage your medical issues, even your medication. For hospital level nursing care, home delivered, call 1300 364 264. RDNS Silverchain. Health. Human. Home. Four-wheel driving? If you want to get there, you want to be TJM equipped. TJM, Nailsworth in Clovelly Park. This is the 5AA Fishing Show, presented by Ned McHenry. 29 minutes to 7, you know what it is. 6.30 on a Tuesday night means we're going fishing Ned McHenry alongside Sam Tugwell for the next half hour. Welcome to you, Ned. Sammy, this weather is making me froth out. How good is it? <laughs> no wind. Sun, I wanted to lead with that today. How yep. good is the weather be? It's fishing weather. It's so good. Last week, the Wednesday, Thursday we had, it was just like, get the tank top out, get the shorts and the thongs out, get back out in the water. It was real fishing weather. And then the weekend, we were a little cold. And then just have the sun back out. I've loved that. Mate, I am an absolute man on happiness steroids lately. <laughs> We've had really good wind. There was a little bit of swell down south, but the sun's out. It's fishing weather. You see the boats all flock to the ramps. Good timing for us to do a good fishing show tonight. I love that. It's all thanks to TJM. Four-wheel driving, you need to get there and be TJM equipped. Go find them at Nailsworth and Clavelli Park. Um, now, we were spruiking at the, about 6 o'clock on the sports show. Giveaway. That you've been talking a big game for a prize tonight. I usually come to the party with a couple you of do. prizes, don't I, Sammy? But you reckon this is your best yet. We've given away really good fishing rods up to 200 bucks, 100 yep. bucks, da da da. But today, what we're giving away is a really good pair of polarized sunnies or any sunnies that you like. So you can nice. go into our sponsors, Adelaide Tackle World Metro or yes. Tackle World Adelaide Metro. Tackle World sorry, Adelaide. Uh, and you can choose a pair of Smith Optic sunnies, your choice. So choose the frame you like, the lens you like. Giving that away tonight. There's wow. sunnies up to value of 350 bucks in there, Sammy. We're going to give that away uh, to a listener tonight. Best caller tonight will receive. Uh, a voucher to go and grab themselves. And that the is outstanding. You are, we were saying uh, with Timmy before, you're a bit like Oprah. You're a little bit like Santa Claus. Yes. You just come in with all the <laughs> gifts. Fishing Santa Claus. Everyone loves it. No, I actually bought it, these. They're actually really, really good sunnies. I said to the crew down there at um at the store, I said, can you give away a pair of sunnies for the show? They said, of course we can. Lady. Love that. Of course we can. Now, of course, we always start the show by asking, have you gotten out in the water? You said the weather's been good. So let me ask, have you? Have I, Sammy? It would be rude of me not to. It'd be <laughs> of cruel of not. me not to in this weather. I can't spruik up the weather and not have been out. Done plenty of fishing. I actually went out on Sunday, yep. went whiting fishing off West Beach. Very nice. Uh, more to follow in our hot spots, of okay. course. Okay. Let you know where we got onto a couple there. And then today, just jetted out really, really quickly um, and got some squid. So just whiting and squid, bread and butter stuff. But there are plenty of species around at Metro, so we'll get to that with our hot spots. You just went out on your own today? I will potted around by You're myself today, one. Sammy. Is that what you do that often on your own? It's a good question. I was looking today at the boat ramp. There was some people there with a dog. There yep. was a husband and wife duo. There was a couple of mates. I was out by myself. I love going out by myself. It's not a. It's not a bad thing peaceful, to do. Like peaceful, like just sort of get a little bit of taking the serenity. Mind. I'd love to know. Actually, it's a good question for our audience. Who, who do they go out with? I'd love to have. Mm. I'd love to have a girlfriend who was right into her fishing. We might yeah. become a bit of a power couple or something. But it's just <laughs> you might me find at the moment. On the air if you're lucky. Yeah. So so no. I ha sorry. I better say I do have a girlfriend. So oh, I, she well, just right. doesn't like fishing. What are you saying? You no, don't well, want to replace her. Well, or you would you like to convert her into fish? There's home? always options, Sammy. <laughs> no, right. no, no. I hope she's not I, listening. I take that back. You I should. Actually, I love my girlfriend very yeah, much. Yeah, good. She doesn't like fishing, so I go out by myself and a few and a few mates. Yeah. So I'm saying, what do, what do people do? Do they have a good mate that always comes out with them? Mm. What makes a good fishing partner is my question. That Sammy. is a good question. So what do you see in a good fishing partner? Well, they Someone need, who takes on the boat. They need to be clean, Sammy. Yep. Or the, at least remove the mess that they make, please. A little bit of diligence around <laughs> that. Start. They need to have a bit of work ethic, a bit of energy out there. They yep. can't be a bit of a slump. 
I take big Riley O'Brien out a fair bit. I mean, he's pretty good. He okay. provides a bit of energy. Even though he can't catch anything? No, he doesn't catch stuff all. What That's makes okay. a good fishing partner and who do you take out? I'd love to know. That's actually a good, good That's question. That's a great for our question. Eight double two three double O double You can call in about anything really fishing related, but that's a good way to start. If you, I mean, you'd obviously, I think the most obvious question and answer would be if you're going to take a bunch of mates out, is that the most fun you could have on the boat? I think the answer to that is yes. Yeah, it's great taking mates out, but are your mates catching you more fish? Are they catching you less fish? Are they making more of a mess? Is it more of a hard are they time? Are everything around? up? Are they lunatics? Have you got a, is there a formula to when you go, it's only me and one mate? It's what my fishing mate, we always go out together, or is it just yourself? How do you do it? A man's best friend. Do you ever take a dog out? Don mm. at Pennington, uh, you get out fishing, mate. Who do you take out? Well, the missus, she loves fishing. She's oh, the queen. She's the queen of every jetty area in South Australia. <laughs> oh, very, she very good. It. Yeah, no, she loves it. She loves. She like. She loves pulling up the crabnets. That saves me pulling them up in the deep water of Wallaroo. But I was, I was ringing up because I ring me mate up today, Wallaroo, and he reckons they're still biting on the blue line. Everyone, everyone at Wallaroo goes past the bloody whiting. You only have to go with the blue line from the. The local jetty all yep. the way to Point, Point Riley, and you'll get whiting. Funny you there's say that, tip, Don. There's a tip for everyone. I've got and Wallaroo then, in my hotspots today, Don. Ah. We're on the same path here. Yeah, just go to the blue line. You're only in about eight, ten foot of water, whiting, biting all the time. But I was ringing up about, like, I was being in Kangaroo Island helping me brother fence and that, and I had to come back for three funerals last Friday. Oh, three of them. Shit. One day. All at, Lucky they were all at Buddy Engfield, but... Uh, I'm going back to Kangaroo Island Thursday, and I've got a couple of mates in American River. The whiting are just going bazunka over there, American River. Well, it's and that then, time of the year, Don. Yeah, and then Friday, it's Nanagai Day, and then on the weekend, it's put the pots in and the dams, and it's uh, Marin and Yabby's. Don, you're just living the bloody life, my friend. Hey, <laughs> before you go, Cape Jervis Jetty, of course, how you get over to Kangaroo Island. Yeah, There's going to be a ferry quite... upgrade. The pier's going. What the I hell's going on with it. that? I heard of it. I don't like that because we normally throw a hand line in with a squid jig and we often get half a dozen nice squid and take them over to KI and cook them straight up. We you should. Know, I'm not happy about it. If that closes, that, that's bad. Don, you know, we you... shared the news last week. The plan is with that ferry upgrade, that pier is going to go. And yeah. currently, no correspondence from, from Yankanilla yeah. Council. I spoke to them today, cool. sorry, the dit. Mm -hmm. No word of what's going to be replaced. As a resource we... for us wreck anglers, we need a pier there or the yeah. break wall needs to be upgraded. Simple as that. Well, we, we fish a lot at Rapid Bay because uh, we used to work at Adelaide Bright and they got, they got a lot of houses in the main street at Rapid Bay, but... You know, and uh, we go there, and when the Tommies are not biting and that, we just scoot around to Cape Jarvis, which is only like mm. 20 k's, 25 k's, and get the big Tommies. Yep, no, you know, beautiful they, Tommies they, there, they get rid of that, a lot of people, A lot of people fish that jetty every night for the Tommy Ruff. It's a cracking jetty. It's going to be a yeah. bloody big loss when we lose that, and it needs to be replaced. That's on. We're on our warpath. Don, got to go. Paul Anglevale, fishing partner. Who do you fish with? Um, Many mates. Uh, my missus loves fishing actually which is uh, can be a positive and a negative um, because you want to sometimes get out by yourself <laughs> Paul come on you've got to say that mate I had to <laughs> <laughs> if it, uh, when we talk about the best I, I suppose the worst would be someone who uh, rocks up fishing doesn't know how to tie knots uh, forgets to bring their own tackle oh. um, is probably my be in my bonnet you're talking about mm. Riley O'Brien just in different oh. words <laughs> Paul, well and truly in the running for a new pair of sunnies, my friend. As is Don, didn't mention to that him, uh, to him, sorry. Yes. Can we go to Andrew at Coosbrook? Uh, Andrew's on the callback, we so we'll Andrew, get back Andrew, to Andrew. We'll be back in a second. That's okay. I do love that. So just back on the, the Cape Jervis thing for a moment, because yes. we did mention that last week and we were going to follow up. So you've spoken to the council today down at Yank. All over it, Sammy. And I'm so you're saying they, they don't know. So hang on. So Yankanilla Council spoke to them. This uh, project is not actually within their jurisdiction. So okay. it's not their project. Pass me on to people at DIT. Uh, got absolutely zero traction speaking to people there at the Department of Infrastructure and Transport. Yep. That that project is, and, and from my gut feel, is things are trying to 
uh, they have tried to move this project just behind the curtain, Sammy. Mm. So rec anglers like you and me don't truly see what's going on and what's planned because I don't see a solution for this jetty being removed. There so, is... so young Andrew Harris, who we had in a few weeks back, he's he's going to have to be all over this thing, Rec I suppose. Fish SA. Rec Fish SA are doing a power of work for us. But my, my I call in 23-year-old Ned yep. McHenry is a rec angler. But what's going to happen when the jetty goes? Uh, we're not too sure. Well, you need to get sure because mm. we need a jetty down at Cape Jervis. It's as simple as that. Sorry for my ramping. Can we go no, to no. Ned's tip, please? We definitely can. Neddy's fishing tip of the week. My tip this week, we've gone a little bit early we and have it's something early. a little bit different, about getting your boat prepared because we're in the lull of winter, aren't we? Just coming out of it, Sammy. Boats have been sitting there. Fuel's been getting stale in our tanks without it moving. Grot's been building up. Come on, we need to get our boats ready. Um, and we're all in the process of that. So who do I go to? Brad Cumming at Christie's Beach Marine, of course. Brad, I want to uh, pick your brains today about how we get our boats cherry ripe for summer. Yes. Hello, Nettie. Sammy, how are you, boys? We're good. Great to hear from good. you, mate. So obviously servicing the like in at Christie's Beach Marine. What are the biggest problems you see when people are in a big hurry to get their boats ready for summer? Yeah, mate, the biggest problem we find is boats have been sitting over the winter period, as you say, so fuel's a big one. If you've got the uh, the option to do so, best thing to do is dump your fuel after a, a long winter, some fresh fuel in the tank, give the steering a move, make sure there's no cables seized, charge your batteries up. Yep. But the key thing is check everything at home first. Don't wait till you get to the boat <laughs> ramp. <laughs> oh, Brad, how, <laughs> how many times have I seen that firsthand? So batteries, uh, great call, fuel, steering, mm -hmm. those are three big ones. Anything else? Yep. Yeah, trailers as well, mate. You know, like yep. wheel bearings in the trailer might have been sitting stationary, flat tyres. You know, that they all sound like basic things, but um, as you know, they're very easy to overlook. Absolutely. And we talk about getting our boats in for a service. I'm sure everyone with an engine will know, either 100 hours or 12 months. Is that still about right, Brad? Yeah, absolutely. So all the modern four-strokes, all the manufacturers require that from a warranty point of view. But it's still relevant for everyone for engines, you know, back in the two-stroke days. There's no problem with that. Every year is ideal. At the most, every two years. But if you're doing regular hours and no, and no other regular maintenance yourself, every 12 months would be ideal. Well done. And hey, just a quick boating industry update for us all. Mm -hmm. What's going on with new boats, used boats? We saw massive inflation in used boat prices uh, mm -hmm. across COVID. Is that starting to come back a little bit now? Uh, what we've seen over the last oh, probably six-ish, 12 months is the manufacturer's price increases have slowed down. Um, that's a, a worldwide thing that we're seeing across all industries, is, well, uh, at least from everyone I speak to, is that the inflation of new stuff isn't going up as quickly. Yep. So what that'll do is then just bring everything hopefully back to a bit more of a normal level. You won't see used boats selling for more than they were purchased for and, and those types of things. We just get back to a little bit of a you know normal state. Yep. And so, Brad, I want to come into Chris Beach Marine. I want a new engine. The wait time on mm -hmm. that, long story short, is far mm -hmm. better than what it was this time last year. Oh, absolutely. And most engines we've got now in stock in most sizes, if we don't, both Mercury and Yamaha our brands have stock of most sizes. So the wait times have come right back. Yep. Looking forward to some good fishing over summer, Sammy. A good tip there. Let's get our boats organised, get them ready to go, cherry ripe so we don't have any issues leading into the peak fishing period. Thank you for joining us, Brad. Christie's Beach Marine, you're a good man. Pleasure, mate. Thank you so much. More days like today would be great. Oh, how yeah, good was I agree. Today? I was frothing out about that weather. No at the start question. Of the show. I don't think anyone on five double A's used the term frothing out. Frothing out. Blake, you'll have a field day with <laughs> probably frothing. will. Speaking of that, we might have to bring that out oh, uh, very shortly. I've heard rumors. He had a about crack this. at you last week. It is uh, <laughs> currently seventeen minutes to seven. We'll come back with some hot spots and more of your calls next. The Art Gallery of South Australia is excited to present an Australian exclusive: Frida and Diego, Love and Revolution. This exhibition will feature the iconic works of two of the most influential and loved artists of the 20th century, Frida Kahlo and Diego Rivera. Today, both are worshipped globally for their fusion of traditional Mexican folk art and international modernism. For tickets and more information, visit agsa.sa.gov.au. Proudly supported by 1395, Adelaide's 5AA. If you thought it was tricky to source a great deal on a new Volkswagen, think again. Mawson Lakes Volkswagen's demo clearance is on now. We've loaded up on a massive range of demo Volkswagens available for delivery right now. Loads of colours, loads of options. 
plus on-site finance options available. And remember, we offer next day servicing too. So hurry, the Volkswagen demo clearance won't last. Mawson Lakes Volkswagen, Salisbury Highway, just a short drive from the city. For over 60 years, our community has placed their trust in Burnside Hospital for exceptional compassionate and personalised care. Our comfortable facilities and serene gardens create an atmosphere that lets patients feel more at home. We're a not-for-profit community hospital and partner with leading visiting medical officers, providing a variety of surgical specialties, from orthopaedics to urology, breast and endocrine, maxillofacial, oncology and maternity. Burnside Hospital, your destination for exceptional care always. G'day, it's Rory Sloan. Good leaders always look to support local. Like Leader Computers, Australia's largest Australian-owned PC manufacturer, based right here in South Australia. Having a world-class manufacturer of computers is a big win for our state. Providing jobs and local support you simply can't get from overseas companies. For the latest Intel and Microsoft-based computers at great pricing with the huge benefit of local support, find your local dealer at leadersystems.com.au. Here at 5AA, we're all about supporting local. Surcare Clinical Research Alliance in Adelaide is looking for people who experience migraines and headaches for a clinical trial. Visit painmedsa.com and click research today. If you're like me and love your golf, then the brand new Big Swing Golf Indoor Simulators at Drummond Golf Mile End will blow you away and you can play rain, hail or shine. Now, I've had a crack at these simulators and they are brilliant. There's 84 amazing courses to play and 12 other sports to choose from. Jump online and take a look at bigswinggolf.com.au then call your mates and head down to Drummond Golf Mile End. To book a business function, you can call one side of the city to the other side for the best deals or simply make one call. Jama's Kitchen really means business for your business. Full AV facilities, tech for today's virtual meetings and packages for small groups through to teams of 200, including the new upstairs dining and function areas. Don't get the runaround. Make Jama's Kitchen your only call. Fancy made easy. Jama's Kitchen. Bowden. Lordman and Pank care for your road safety, so we've partnered with RAA to give RAA members $100 off a complete pair of prescription glasses or prescription sunglasses. Minimum spend $350 per the T's and C's apply. Ends August 20. Lordman and Pank, we care for eyes. Four-wheel driving? If you want to get there, you want to be TJM equipped. TJM, Nailsworth in Clovelly Park. This is the 5AA Fishing Show, presented by Ned McHenry. It is 13 minutes to 7. John Blake's going to join you after 7 o'clock. Then Leith Forest from 8 tonight. Ned, you've got a prize for this evening for our best caller. We've had some cracking calls so far, Sammy, but still have our sunnies to give away or the promise of some sunnies. Anyone on the live stream could see me wearing them now indoors. Is that a yay or nay from you? They are a big yay indoors? for me, although not indoors. I don't like wearing them indoors. No, uh, no practicality about wearing sunnies indoors is there. Yeah, I wouldn't have thought a little that's bit of a great... Look. A little bit of a look at me about the Sunnies indoors, isn't there? <laughs> Who's we're party? not about on the show. Who was that party boy, Corey, back in the early oh, 2000s? That I'm, looked a bit like him. I'll say sorry, but I'm not taking my glasses <laughs> <That's> off. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> Sam is out of Golden Grove. 8223 is the line you can call in on. How are you, Sam? G'day, mate. How you going, mate? We're good. Going very well, Yeah, Sam. that's good. That's good, Ned and Sam. My uh, fishing partners uh, definitely, I've got two boys, and um, over the, well, the last, probably, what are we talking, 15 odd years, um, they're definitely my best fishing partners by a, oh, well a country done. mile. Well done. Um, and really, my youngest son, who I, he started fishing when he was about two, and um, so he comes out with me regularly now. Um, we're always down at West Beach, North Haven, and um, one of the reasons is just the, the quality time that you're out in the water with him, yep. and it's the best time, you know, of really of my life. I love it. I oh. actually love it. And uh we, we're heading over to, you know, Edithburg. We'll go to Port Augusta, go for the Kingies and yeah. down to Victor, go for Tuna. And uh, Isaac's always always with me, you know. And um, and, and I really introduced these guys to, to fishing very early on because pretty much what my dad did for me as well. Yep. And um, it was just, it's just been those great memories and we always discuss them and what we're doing. And but Plus, he's a bloody gun fisher as well. So, you know, it's a... 
it's fantastic. I love it. Sam, I'm so, I was smiling that whole time in my mind there. What a brilliant summary. I mean, that is literally what it's all about. Sam, you are leading. You've got a pair of sunnies so close. I hope no one pips you. Uh, Andrew at Kersbrook. You've got some whiting grounds, Andrew. Oh, I, I don't have any whiting grounds per se myself. One of the older guys up here um, is retired, goes, goes fishing a lot. Yep. We were, we were chatting the other day, and I remember hearing you, I don't know, a month or so ago, asking a couple of people whether they thought the whiting grounds were a bit depleted this, this season. Yeah, yep. Um, he reckons that his, his whiting grounds are full of baby snapper. Yeah, yep. And he, he said that the, uh, the snapper band has backfired and that the baby snapper are all into the whiting grounds. And what, I don't know whether they eat the whiting or baby whiting or whatever they do, but I thought it was really interesting because the, the snapper band is a bit of a bone of contention with fishermen. It absolutely is, Australia. Andrew. Yeah, well, there's a conversation worth having there regarding the snapper band, isn't there? Look, I think it's crazy to say it hasn't been necessary and important, but certainly on these whiting grounds, there are a huge amount of baby snapper. But what's the silver lining of that, Sammy? Well, eventually they'll grow up. Well, let's hope so, if mm. we foster them and nurture them. How much longer do you think this ban will be in place for? It's another two years from here, isn't it? It was, ca- it was another three from January this year. Yeah, another so, three, we're all, so, so two and a half. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. No, I, I see it going the full way yep. and then potentially being open, which it needs to be because this state needs snapper. It's well, what's it been? Three and a half years. It's been a while it? now. Long Every, time. Since I've moved to South Australia, I haven't been out of fish for snapper, How which this uh, state was once famous for. Yeah. Tanker World Adelaide Metro, they bring us our hotspots for the best range price service guaranteed. You can find them 612 Port Road, Allenby Gardens or head online, tackleworldadelaide.com.au. Nettie's Fishing Hotspots. Let's go, Sammy. Metro saw a catfish was caught in the Torrens. A oh, fella really? Sent, sent me a photo. There's a bit going on in the Torrens, actually. You get eels and uh, catfish and bits and pieces. Nice. Saw that. Uh, anyway, snook at Somerton. Saw reports on that, actually. And Hallett Cove, too. There's some snook getting around, too. So the long snookly, Sammy. Beautiful. Uh, a squid caught in West Lakes, too. How the heck does West Lakes as a water <laughs> system is bizarre? It doesn't make yeah, sense. Mulloway squid. Bring, it's just the strangest system ever. I haven't fished there much, but getting squid in there to me just doesn't make sense, but Mixed it does bag. happen. So go fishing in West Lakes because there are good reports there sometimes. Uh, Metro Whiting, West Beach. I promised I'd tell you where we fished, and mm-hmm. I certainly will. 3.5 Ks from the ramp, pretty much straight out to the left. There's some ground out there. Now, okay. I can't say any more. I've already said too much. It is pretty common <laughs> ground. A lot of people fish there, so it's no real secret. Mm-hmm. But uh, used cockles, moved around. Didn't get my bag limit, but did get some nice whiting there, Sammy. Nice. Um, so, yeah. Squid around two. Turn one into two with those. We know they hunt in packs. So you get one. Keep that one in the water. Throw your jigs in behind it because they will hunt together, Sammy. Uh, turn one into two is my tip there with the squid. They're around. The salmon continue. Port Nalunga jetty on those rough days. Get down there because it's a super, super productive squid jetty. Stansbury and Wallaroo. Hey, we had a call about Wallaroo. We did just before. And I've got it in my hotspots. Great. I mean, wow. Things are starting to compound there. <laughs> uh, they're the whiting highlights there. Uh, Wool Bay Jetty for squid. Got to be the best jetty in the state, I reckon, for squid. Uh, out west, Coffin Bay, um, the salmon at Gunya and Grenley Beach. Mm-hmm. Uh, lower low. That's saying you go beautifully. Um, a little bit later, those reports. So Metro, the salmon will get going a bit earlier than what it will out there as they as they move through there. But um, yeah, the reports are really starting to get pretty consistent at Coffin Bay now. Squid around the main wharf and the Caravan Park jetty there at Port Lincoln, Sammy. The group, the bunker group, as we mm-hmm. know, squid, whiting, trevally there, super prevalent. Good time of year to fish the group. Uh, Elliston jetty has squid and tommies. And offshore of Streaky Bay, there's nannies, blue moorwong, Sharks, really, really good fishing when you can get out, when the weather and the swell allows you. Touch on southeast just quickly, Robe. There's some good winter gummies at Robe, oh. home of Jordan Dawson Robe, of course, beautiful yes. part of the world. And the barrels down at the southeast. So Port McDonald is really quiet mm-hmm. on the huge bluefin barrel tuna front. No barrels popping up there at the moment. They are being caught across the border at Portland. You did say that. Um, but... It's a matter of weeks, as I said. So in two weeks, uh, we will be talking about Port McDonald absolutely exploding with barrels. It's just a matter of time. It could be two weeks, three weeks, one week. I'm mm-hmm. not sure, but they will show up Patience. again. So let's 
let's uh, wait for that. Sometime. Fantastic. And keep sending your photos in. I do like seeing them on Channel 7. Yes. Was it Thursday nights? Thursday nights, about 6.30. We're just promoting wreck fishing in Very SA. Very good. It's a billion dollar industry, I've Sammy. Enjoying... We need some love for wreck fishing, please. How's your TV uh, skills coming along? I've been enjoying it. I think you, you were made for TV screen. Really? Yeah. Well, I thought I had a bit of a head for radio, but somehow Channel 7's ticked off the TV. <laughs> Clearly not fussed about ratings anymore, so... Well, I'll tell you what, because uh, we are on radio and we get to stuff around a little bit, we're a little bit more ad-lib, we can uh, talk about things a little bit off the beaten track. Sometimes we go a little bit too far off the beaten track and someone called John Blake just likes oh. to pounce. No, <laughs> play it. Well, it did happen. Eventually was going to happen. He took us out on uh, Friday. And when we get behind this is the 5AA Fishing Show, presented by Ned McHenry. 29 to 7 on your Tuesday. Welcome along. It is the 5AA Fishing Show. Sam Tugwell alongside the great man himself, Ned McHenry. Welcome to you. G'day, Sammy. It's great to be back on with the Fishing Show. We're going to talk about what's biting, what's going on in the fishing world, Sammy. And I've got a couple of hacks to share too, Sammy. Fantastic. Because I love fishing, Sammy. Yes. I love it, Sammy. My life revolves around fishing. And the way I run my life is I go out fishing, catch a couple of fish, then I come back in, run out on the footy field, kick a goal for the crows, then I disappear again, Sammy, because I'm straight back out fishing again. Wonderful work. Yeah, then I'll catch a few more fish, and when it gets a bit slow and the fish stop biting, Sammy, I run back out on the footy field, kick a quick goal for the crows, then I'm straight back out fishing again, Sammy, and that's how I like it. So when you don't see me on the footy field, Sammy, am I sitting on the bench? Yes. No, I'm sitting in my boat, Sammy, and I've got a quick tip for you now, Sammy. Let's quickly fit in our tip of the week. Nettie's Fishing Tip of the Week. Well, for anyone who has an anchor rope and anyone with a boat has an anchor rope, yep. so every 10 metres along the rope, you put a little bit of paint, Sammy, on the rope so you can see how much anchor rope has gone out. So every 10 metres, you use a different colour so you can see straight away how much rope is out at any time. Very clever. Yeah, and here's another tip, Sammy. Yeah. In between each of those paint marks, you put another mark if you kick a goal. So anytime you're out fishing, you can see at a glance how many goals you've kicked for the crows. How long did it take you to work that out as a trick? Oh, not long, and I'm not sure how many people can use that tip, Sammy, but Tex Walker does, and his anchor rope stretches from here to Tasmania. <laughs> the genius of John He's Blake. Just... He's going to join us after 7 o'clock. Is that what I sound like or not? Well, there's two things I took out of that. One, I clearly say yep a lot. <laughs> and two, you say Sammy a lot. Yeah, I do say Sammy a lot. I've been guilty of that. Is my voice that high? Though. Well, you just got high then. Oh, shivers, it's breaking. <laughs> now, before we disappear, you said you've got a little story for us. Yes, two things for you. I uh, just want to say well done to Sam. Well so done, we'll Sam. So get his details. Well done. A pair of Smith Optic Sunnies. Well done. That's a cracking prize. Great I actually, prize. I bought these, so they're not given to me. Bought Good. them. Cracking Sunnies. Um, we've given those away to Sam. Well done, Sam. Hey, saw a kingfish that was tagged in Coffin Bay in 2019, hmm. right? Two years later, it rocks up and is caught in Seal Rocks, New South Wales. No Two way. Two years later. So that's 1,601 kilometres for the smallest possible distance travelled. That fish has migrated. That's pretty amazing, isn't that's it? That's incredible. For a that's that absolutely is, sensa uh, amazing. That is amazing. Yeah. You think about that. And the lesson out of that is, is like we need to start working together as a whole country because people think about fisheries in isolation. They think Coffin Bay, we've got to look after the kingfish in Coffin Bay. Mm. Well, hang on. We've got to look after the kingfish everywhere. Everywhere. Because they'll move around and it's, it's a whole country thing. It's a world thing. Let's look after our fish. But I thought that was really cool. I mean, what a great distance to travel that is. That is that's, a, that's a proper swim. I like that. Well done, Nettie. Great story. Great way to finish the show. We're out of time. The news is coming up at 7 o'clock with Mel. John Blake coming up and then Leith Forrest from 8. Have a great week. We're back 6.30 next Tuesday. Land has never been more valuable. So make the most of it. If you're building or live on a sloping block, 